This time around, we're going to work with some variables and run a simple loop. This should feel pretty similar to programming in Python because, of course, the logic is all the same. It's just the syntax that is different. So on the desktop environment, this time I'm going to edit uh, graphically. So there's my chapter 3 directory, and there's the argument script that we wrote in the last uh, section. We can see that it's been given this, this gear symbol to indicate that it's a script. So I'm just going to right click and create new empty file, and I'm going to call this decisions or decision. We can see that because I've just created a file, it doesn't have that icon, but when we make it executable, it'll become an icon just like arguments. So if we open that up, this might just be a little bit easier to write our script in. So of course we have to start off with the hash bang line, which is bin bash. And I'm just going to put in a comment saying what the script does. Demo of decision making, that'll do. So let's first create some variables. And to do this, we can just assign them. So we can say A equals five and B equals two. Uh, don't put a space in between the equal sign and the two or the B and the equal sign. That'll be interpreted as if it were a command. So we need to, when we're doing arithmetic like this, we shouldn't have spaces. Going down to the next line, we could now do some arithmetic with them. We can say C. Now to access a variable, we use the dollar symbol. So we could say C equals A times B. But that wouldn't be quite correct just yet. We would have to actually wrap that in two brackets and then put a dollar symbol at the front again, which is just, it's just hard to look at. So there's an equivalent and much nicer looking statement called let, and we can say let C equal a times B. No dollar symbols, no brackets, just exactly the arithmetic that we want. I've just shown you this first one just in case you come across that and it looks quite intimidating. There's a lot of syntax and a lot of ugly characters going on, but it's just equivalent to saying let C equal A times B. So that, that C should be 10. So now we can now we can do some logic with our variables. Let's do an if statement. So we can say if and now an if statement looks like this. We have an if, a space, and we have some square brackets that have a space next to them. So everything's padded out. And we can say, uh, let's check if A is greater than B. So we can say A, space, and then we do a, a dash, GT for greater than, and then we access the B variable. So you need this space right here and this space right here and the spaces in between. It is very, very syntax sensitive. So we've got our if, the next line we can say then, and this is where we come in a bit and we can say do something. And then the if statement is finished off with a phi. So if and phi. I guess that's just a, a nice mirroring of if to say that's the end of the if statement. So let's put some logic inside this. Let's put let's put a, a, a command inside this if statement. Let's say uh, let's just echo the result. Echo a greater than b. That's fine. Uh, and let's put in a few other commands. We can say then let c equals one and we're not necessarily done yet. We can also put in an else. So we can put in an else statement here, and this will execute whenever this expression is not true. So if you decide to change these variables, we'll get some different behavior. We could say echo a less than b, and we can set c equal to something else. OK. So that's, that's our if statement, which has a, a sequence of commands to do if true and a sequence of commands to do if false. Now, now that we've modified C, we can write a loop that uses C, and that way the, the behavior of the entire program will change as you play with those initial conditions for A, B, and C. So we could say uh, loop 10 times. 
and I've chosen 10 because I've got C is equal to 1 here. So that's going to be my counter for the loop. I'm going to count C from 1 to 10. And we'll use a while loop. So just like an if statement, it's a, a very similar expression. While. And while loops will execute so long as the expression is true, which means that if we want to loop 10 times for C, we can say while C is less than or equal to 10. So we can put in a, a literal number there. And I'll, sh I'll show this in a different way. Rather than going onto the, new, onto the new line and saying do, we can put in a semicolon and enter do. And now we're inside the loop, so we can echo, and we're going to echo just the count number of how many times we've looped. And of course, so this loop doesn't go on forever, we have to actually increment C. So we could say let C equal C plus 1, that's, that's fine. A much shorter way to write that is to say let C plus plus. And that plus plus syntax just means increment the variable C. And then we finish off our loop with done. So hopefully that'll run first go. I'm just going to fire up the terminal and set it to executable. So we can see decision is not executable, but arguments of course is. So again, we can see mod u plus x to add owner permissions, uh, owner execute permissions, and then we can apply it to decision. And I'm not going to type it all out, I'm just going to use a wildcard there. So if we lsl again, decision is now executable. So let's have a run of decisions. Okay, that, that looks reasonable. So of course A is greater than B, because A is 5 and B is 2. And then we have our loop of 10. So let's have a, a quick look perhaps at what happens when uh, A is not greater than B. Let's make B 200 and I'm just going to save that. So you can go to file save or I just pressed control S to save. Let's run that again and see what happens. Okay, so this time around we've gone from 5 to 10 instead of 1 to 10 and of course that has to do with our if statement. We entered the else condition and that sets C equal to 5 and we were still using C for the counter in our loop. So C is now starting at 5 and it's counting up to 10. That completes our workshop on uh, decision making. We'll write a bit of a more useful script in the next video.